Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as most of you guys know that I have completed my CKS and I got my CKS certification a couple of days back. And yesterday I got this. So lucky me that this happened after my certification. And a lot of you guys have been requesting me to review the exam, review, I mean, how the exam was, how did I prepare, how long did it take me to prepare for this exam, right? So instead of answering each one of you individually, I thought, I mean, let me just do a video, right? Uh, so that uh, everybody can benefit from it. So yeah, let's get started. So I decided to give this exam like a month ago, uh, but I seriously started preparation I think some 15 days back and I started with like everyone of you out there start with with Mumshad's course right uh, it's like the de facto for Kubernetes uh, and it gives you a very good uh, overall idea of what the exam would contain but uh, I mean like any other course you actually have to dig deep uh, in that particular course for yourself right no course can actually teach you everything so you have to read the documentation. The good thing is uh, your documentation is uh, available to you during the exam for this particular exam. And in fact, for all the uh, Kubernetes exam, the documentation is available. That's a good part. So you don't actually have to worry about a lot of stuff. So I did the Mumshad course. Uh, it took me like a week's time to complete it. There were some sections which were very long and very detailed as well. So that was a good thing. So I completed that uh, Mumshad's course had like three uh, exams also, uh, the mock exam, right? So I did those until uh, I like scored like 85% in each of the exam. So the first attempt I failed like very badly. And then I just kept going on to the topics which I thought that I had not grasped. And then I re-watched the videos I looked over to the documentation, uh, read the documentation, and then again went uh, and gave, gave the mock test and kept doing that until and unless I got like 90% in all the three exams. And after that, I, I like logged in to my Linux Foundation portal uh, and scheduled my exam. And when you schedule, when you actually buy CKS paper, you, actually, you also get uh, two simulators from killer.sh free of cost which earlier you have to buy for somewhere around $30. Uh, but now it's free with CKS and CK, I believe. So I took those simulators. So I took those simulators like four times. So once you enable a simulator, it's, it's available to you for like 36 hours. And within that 36 hours, you can keep taking it as many times as you want. So I was only able to take them like twice uh, for each. So four times for the two simulators and they have the same number, uh, they have the same questions. So you don't have to worry whether they have the same questions or not. They all, both the simulator simulators have the same questions. So, and in those simulators, I got somewhere around 85% marks. And, and when you, I mean, when you go to killer.sh, it says that simulators are a lot tougher than the actual exam. So I was comfortable uh, with that and this all I completed within 10 days and then I just sat for the exam uh, on Saturday. Okay and yeah and but uh, during the exam yeah let me tell you that. So during the exam at one point I felt that probably I'll not make it because there were a few questions where I think I where I thought like I goofed up but luckily no I got I mean, I got a decent percentage uh, over 80s, right? So yeah, that's that's how I prepared. And anyone, I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it, right? Cool. Moving on to what all things feature in exam and how's the exam overall. So if I have to judge it on the basis of the toughness of the paper, I would say it's, it's like, not moderate it's a little over moderate right so it's moderately tough exam it's not very tough exam uh, and it's not either very easy like ckad which is very easy right so it's tougher than ck so it's like moderate because ck was ck was like moderately tough exam not uh, not very easy not very tough uh, so it was moderate but this exam is a little over moderate so you have to be a little more prepared a little more cautious and a time management is very important 
बिकॉज आई रिमेंबर वेन आई अपियर फॉर सी के आई कम्प्लीटेड दैट पेपर वे बिफोर द टाइम बट फॉर सी के एस आई कम्प्लीटेड इनफैक्ट आई डेंट कम्प्लीट इट वॉज ऑटो सबमिटेड बिकॉज माई टाइम गॉट ओवर सो यू कैन सी दैट एंड एंड द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन सो इन माई सी के एग्जाम आई गॉट अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू क्वेश्चन फॉर सी के एंड फॉर सी के एस आई ओनली गॉट फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन सो एंड द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन अगेन दे कैन डिफर राइट सो आई ओनली गॉट फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन एंड इट टुक मी आई मीन इनफैक्ट इट टुक मी मोर देन टू आवर्स बिकॉज माई पेपर वॉज ऑटो ऑटोमेटिकली सबमिटेड so yeah so you can i mean see that uh, it's like a little more tough than a moderate paper so that's how the toughness of the exam is and what all stuff feature in exam so let me just uh, walk you through those so number 1 is the network policy so network policies feature quite heavily uh, i think in my case there were like 3 to 4 questions that came directly from network policies some were of very low weightage like 2% and 3% but uh, there were a couple of questions which were high weightage as well uh, to 6% uh, the next uh, thing which would feature in exam is admission controllers and it is a very important topic uh, i won't go into details of admission controllers because i would be doing a course on cks and where i would be explaining admission controllers in detail but you should know that admission controllers basically they are just a piece of code or an element which uh, intercept your api calls before they reach the api server right and then perform some action based on that right so that's what admission controllers are and they feature they are a very important part of the cks exam and specially one admission controller or rather two admission controller which are very important for you to look into is the image policy webhook so this is like a webhook kind of a, a, a controller which actually lets you create your own custom admission controller right more details uh, will come in the course and the second admission controller is the psp or the pod security uh, policy so this is also an admission controller pod security policies and they are nothing they i mean they are very similar to something like a security context where you can actually define what kind of access you want to give to your pods or your uh, containers right so whether they should have read write access to a particular file system or whether Uh, they should run as privileged or not or whether they should run as root users things like that so those all stuff you can define in your pod security policies right secomp is another thing which which is a part of exam uh, luckily i didn't get any question from secomp uh, secomp stand for secure computing and this is basically used to so you have things called secomp profiles right and they are basically used to uh, i think restrict system calls and this this is not a feature of kubernetes this is basically a feature of linux so secomp is i mean i won't say is very important but it does feature in exam next uh, important topic uh, if i talk about is auditing in kubernetes so i mean you should know how to enable auditing uh, in at kube api server uh, how to basically modify your api server manifest to enable auditing which basically uh, takes pay, takes place at like three level so there's metadata there's request and there's uh, request response right so you should know about auditing as well how will you enable auditing uh, in kubernetes cluster uh, the next uh, tool or the next uh, topic which features so i got like a good question of 6% weightage from app armor or rather not 6% yeah it was a 12% weightage question from app armor so app armor is another uh, linux feature so it's not uh, related to like your uh, kubernetes it's basically a linux feature and again this is uh, to restrict access to resources right your pods and uh, your containers to restrict access or to confine basically to confine to a set of resources that's that's what app armor profiles and you wouldn't be asked to write app armor profiles uh, instead they would give you an app armor profile they would probably ask you to and uh, basically enforce that app armor profile on a particular node and then create pods using that app armor profile right so that's that's the kind of question you can expect secrets so secrets are like the objects of kubernetes right so you should know how to create secret of different types tls docker opaque right and generic and how you can use the secret to mount on your pods right so this would come as short questions like 2% weightage or 3% weightage 
but these are important because these are quick scoring uh, things so you can quickly create secret and mount them on your pod and run the pod right so it would hardly take you like five minutes to do this and don't overlook these small things they are very very important next par next topic where from where you'll get very quick questions uh, of small weightages like 2% 3% is rbac so rbac basically consists of cluster roles cluster role bindings roles and role bindings and uh, service accounts so there'll be quick questions like create cluster role xyz create a cluster role binding give them so 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 access to a particular resource right so that's the kind of thing which you can do it from uh, imperative command you even don't have to write uh, the manifest so you should be quick on these and that's where your ck knowledge comes in so like i've written all the ck stuff you should know by hand this should be very thorough that's that's where you can do things like creating secrets or creating rbacks very quickly right next is security context so security context is basically uh, again to control uh, privileges and accesses to your pods and containers so you can define security context within your pod manifest to say run as a particular user run your pod as a particular user uh, give read write access to particular file system uh, give access to particular linux capabilities right so all this stuff you can define in security context so that's that's what security context is and you can define security context at the pod level as well as the container level so you can do both and this this would i mean yeah, there will be like uh, around 3 to 4 question from security context right so this is a very important topic security context psp we have already covered so it's a part of admission controller and the last part which you should be familiar with is troubleshooting uh, in cluster basically you should know how to troubleshoot a docker file you should know how to troubleshoot uh kubernetes yaml right so you can expect question like they'll give you a docker file and they'll ask you to just go through the docker file and point out uh, say couple of uh, security flaws right so that's that's what they'll do and similarly they can give you uh, kubernetes yaml for a pod for a deployment and then they'll just ask you to point out what's what's the security flaw is in there in those particular yaml files right external tools so external tools feature heavily in the paper so that's why i have kept it at the last so external tools like falco uh, like trivi uh, there is a thing called sysdig right so these external tools they feature uh, heavily and they they feature heavily and there are i mean they have heavy weightage so the question from falco in my case was for 12% weightage and then there was one question for from trivi so trivi is basically an image scanning tool uh, which was for 6% weightage so you can see that 18% of my paper was from external tools and there are a lot of external tools which luckily didn't come like kubesec so you can use kubesec to basically scan your uh, master your nodes right and it's like running your cis benchmarks and yeah and one more thing so there can be questions like they'll give you a cis benchmark report already and they'll ask you to fix all the failed stuff for say api server or your controller and your kubelet right so you would actually have to fix those uh, issues but the good thing is that with cis report they also provide you the fix so what fix you need to do so it's just that you need you should be confident enough to modify your kube api server yaml and make sure that the api server comes up after you modify and because as soon as you modify your uh, kube api yaml and save it the kube api server restarts right it's because it's it's a static pod it's it's deployed as static pod so any time you make a change uh, the pods are redeployed so you should make sure that your kube api server comes up and you don't make any always make a copy of your kube api server yaml before editing it right so don't uh, just go and edit the uh, raw file make a copy of it and then do the editing and with that i think i've covered everything uh, so you, you can see i mean it's it's not a magic like cracking cks exam initially i thought it was a tough exam because security is not one of my 
strong points but i mean i got in in lieu of like 85 percent marks so i think anybody of you out there can crack this exam and the passing percentage is 67 so it's even lower than ck so for ck i think it was 72 so passing per percentage is less uh, if even if you leave a couple of topics from here you can still easily go ahead and crack this exam right so yeah that's all pretty much i had uh, i hope you like the video i hope you start your preparation and just go for this exam right please subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching